Hello, I'm Cuban Ruben and I love Lego. Welcome to Board Deck and Dice, where today we are taking a look at Catbox. Catbox is a two to five player game with cats. In this game there is a bit of hidden roll and a bit of um, card play to sort of maintain area control, but no one knows exactly who you are. Let's take a look. The first thing you would do in cat box is hand out the identities. There are five different colour cats and one dog. If you are one of the cats, you would your object of the game is to have your colour cat showing. Uh, you get one point for every, every colour of your cat that is showing at the end of the game. And for your largest consecutive group, orthogonally linked, so no diagonals, you will get a bonus one point for every cat in that group. So if purple here had um, five cats showing and they were all in a group of five, they would score 10. If you are the dog, you score points for groups of three of the same color. So three purple, three pink would score you two points each. Three of any color score you two points and empty boxes score you one point. You don't have to get them in a row. So these are dealt out at the start of the game and then hidden from everyone else. In cat box, there are two types of card and they are all double-sided. You have cards with four boxes full of cats and cards with only three boxes full of cats. And there are different rules for how you play these cards. If you have a card with four boxes full of cats, you can only play this card over one box on any other played card and you must do that. So if I was blue, for example, I might want to try and get a little row going there, but I don't want to make it too obvious that I'm blue. So I might try something tricky like starting off people thinking I'm yellow, but I'm thinking that later on I might be able to link these blues in a sneaky move. If you play a, let's put a few more cards down. If you play a card with a empty box on or a closed box on, which remember gets points for the dogs, you can cover one box or two boxes at anywhere on the card. So you could cover two boxes across two box, across two card, existing cards. So here, be a bit confusing whether you're pink or blue because you've created two of each. That is it for placing rules. How do you choose cards? Well, depending on the amount of players in the game, you will have between uh, three and two and one card in your hand. As I said, the cards are all double-sided. So say I'm player one, I've got this card facing me, so everyone else can see the back of it. I can only use cards that are facing me. So I can use the bit I'm looking at on my card, not the back side, just the bit I'm looking at, or the back of the cards other people are holding. And whoever's card I use, they then take another card from the draw pile. So they are different on each side. So I might scupper someone, but I wouldn't really know because I'd never know what was on their other side. I just have to choose the best for me in confusing people. So there is a more complex version of the game where every player gets a uh, set of coloured tokens, obviously separate to the identity of your cat, otherwise they know who you are. These tokens do various things. The mouse will let you move a card that's already in play. The uh, paw, I think, lets you have another go. The fish lets you save a card for a future turn. The cat protects, it, protects boxes all around it, so if I play that there, no one can play on these boxes all around it. And the arrow, I forget for a minute, let me get the handy uh, sheet. Oh yeah, that's right, the arrow lets you cover up four cats, so you have to put that one there as a one-off. They're all one-off uses. Once they've been used, they get discarded, and there is a little cheat sheet that gives you the point scoring on the back and the uses of the tokens. So the tokens are an advanced rule. Interestingly, any token you don't use gives you one point at the end of the game, and five points in this game can be a game changer. That is Catbox. Catbox is an abstract game. Let's be honest, it's got this brilliant theme with brilliant artwork of cats in a box, but ultimately it is an abstract uh, game. The theme could have been anything. The fact that it fits and is done really well and really playfully 
um, hides the fact that there is actually a deep strategic game here. If it had just been you have your role and everyone can see what it is and you're trying to area control that way because there is that element of area control in it where you're trying to have the most caps showing on the whole board at the end of the game then that would have been one thing but the cleverness of having the hidden roles and having one person who may or may not be the dog because not all the roles are handed out so you may have a dog in the game or you might not and that player playing slightly differently so you're able to set up groups of three and make people think you're the dog when actually you're playing a bigger game, it's very clever, it's very sneaky, yet it's very understandable. And if you get bored of that level of the game, you can add in these brilliant wooden tokens which give you another layer of strategy. Do I use this token or do I try and have as many points extra at the end? Because in this game, five points is going to be a lot. Five points could switch the leader and if someone's rapidly using all their tokens but you can manage without and still get a decent score, you could end up winning having not used your tokens. So for such a small game, there is a lot in this box. It also is easy to teach and it works well with people of all ages. My six-year-old was beating me at this by pretending he was a different colour really effectively. Um, so that's slightly worrying about his ability to bluff. But my wife loves it as well. A, a guy I introduced it to last night who's very intelligent. It said it was his favourite game. He doesn't play a lot of games, admittedly. But he said next time he comes, this is the one he wants to play. Because there is strategy in there. There is bluff. It is a very clever very enjoyable game. It's, um, it surprised me this one, as you can probably tell by the way I'm speaking. Intimidation value, uh, straight out of the box, very low. There's, there's three types of cards, identity cards, four, card, four box cards and three box cards, and then a set of tokens, which although they add an extra layer of intimidation, you don't have to use them until you're ready to use them. And I would say there is enough depth and strategy in here that you might choose never to use the tokens but they are there and that's really nice. Um, so intimidation is, is low and, um, what's that thing, scalable. <laughs> um, instructions, really clear, really easy. The, the biggest two ideas really are the fact that you, you can use the cards that are facing you, so essentially anything that you can't see is hidden and you can't use, and the way you can place the cards. And that's it, that's all you need to know. Um, and the scoring, which is really easy. So uh, yeah, it's the rule book is good and the game is a lot of fun. It's a high recommendation for me. If I had one small problem, um, which is gonna be the nature of any game where you're using cards to play on top of each other, is because you're only covering um, corners of a card, sometimes only one at a time, and you can potentially have you know, rows going where they're, they're on. It can take one knock and the whole table is, is knocked and the cards shift a little bit. So if you're um, a perfectionist, if you like your nice straight lines, if you like the cards lining up exactly right all the time, this might set off some, some, some alarms in you because they can get shifted a bit and you do have to kind of move them back and remember where they were. But that is really, uh, so far, the only flaw I've found in this game and I've, I've played it a lot now, um, very enjoyable. My, um, my secret hit of the year really, and uh, one that I think more people would enjoy and more people should know about. That is Catbox from Grail Games. I've been Ruben, what was I, Cuban Ruben? Or was I Ruben Schmuben? Who knows? Find out, rewind the video, watch it again. The game is, this, is that good. This has been Board Deck and Dice. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.